Hey, what's up guys? Andy here, and today we're reviewing over The Promised Neverland episode 12, titled 150146, or January 15th, 2046. Um, this episode is... I don't know how to explain it. This episode, everything came together perfectly, and it was so beautiful, and this really made this series turn from like an 8 for me to like a 10. There's so much I want to talk about now, but I don't want to spoil for the review, but uh, I will drop two big bombs here. Ray is confirmed Isabel's child, which Isabel is mom, but on top of that, Emma changed her stance. She's not leaving anyone behind, but she's picking her plays. She's calling her shots on how she can do it. We'll discuss all that in more detail in the video, though. But uh, we also got Mom's backstory here, so that was insane. And on top of all this, gang, this was just an overall beautiful episode. The music was great. The visuals were great. I loved it. Um... I'm not sure if this was the season finale, because there's definitely going to be more of this show. But uh, I don't know if this was the it for right now, or if it's going to continue next week. I'm going to have to look into it. Hopefully it continues. But uh, yeah, without further delay, gang, let's go ahead and jump into this review. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to, or you just want to help the channel grow in general. And let's go. We start things off with this artwork of The Promised Neverland because we got no intro this week, which was really cool. I, I did enjoy that a lot, but we didn't get an intro this week. We just got this picture, which is really cool the way it was like so simplistic but so detailed at the same time. Uh, then we cut back over to Mom holding Phil, and I was like, okay, we're going to get a little recap. We didn't get any recap, so I'm just like, huh. Okay, where's the intro coming? And then they cut straight over to uh, Emma. And Ray and her were talking, and then they cut back to a flashback, and Don's telling her everything's going smoothly for now. Everyone about five years old is on our side, because Ray asked, where are the babies at? And then we get this. Uh, Gilda tells her, she's like, what about the other kids and the other plants? And we can't, you know, we can't save everybody. And Emma's like, you're right. So she's fiddling with this pen and she decides to tell Philip. Now, when she told Philip this, you know, it, it cut over to the uh, title card. But before that, you just see the expression on his face go from like happy, smiley to frowning. Then it cuts over. And this is January 15th of 2046. And this is the day that they escape. Uh, I really love how they played the numbers off in this. It was really cool, but that's far from the best part of this episode because when she tells Philip here, he was like, I was thinking that the whole time. I didn't know what sister meant when she said harvested. And I do have to say, I am sorry, Phil, because I thought you was a bad guy, but you all right. Uh, and he says, leave us behind. Leave the kids who are under five behind, and then, you know, you can come back and get us later when you've made a better plan. Because Emma explains they're not going to get harvested until they're six no matter what, and they all have high scores, so that gives them about two years no matter what. And that's when they uh, go cuts back to Emma and Ray talking, and she says, in two years, I'm coming back to get Phil and the others and all the kids in the other four plants. And Mom pulls out the radio and she says, This is 73584 from Plant 3. We've got a fire and escapees. And that's when they start setting the alarms off and start heavily guarding the bridge. But, um, what, what they and Ray don't know is Norman had scouted out an area for them to get across the cliff. It's only one spot and it's going to be dangerous. So they have a little flashback of Don training this. He had a rock tied to the string and he lassoed it around a tree and then zip lined across and secured the other lines for the other kids. So that was really cool. And they all start going across and then Norman, like as they're going across, Norman and Ray are having a conversation. Of course, Norman's not there, but you know, Ray says, what a smug face, how annoying. And they're just talking about how 
Well, you wanted to see something cool, didn't you? And Norman's just like, huh. And then this little girl started crying because she couldn't get across. So Ray, Ray, his character whole changed here. He decided that he tied her to himself and got her across. And the other two kids, and it was just Emma. And that's when Mom ran up and she said, don't go, Emma. And Emma just said, goodbye, home. Goodbye, everything. And then went across and they cut the lines. And, you know, Mom couldn't go across anyway or her heart would explode. And that's when we got Mom's flashback. She pulled her hair down and looked over the cliff and she remembered. This little boy here was named Leslie and it was like Isabel's love interest, so to speak. And the day he got shipped out, you know, she started crying and she was remembering because he wrote this song for... Well, not her necessarily, I don't think, but like... She called him and she wrote. he wrote this song that was just beautiful. I loved it. I don't know what kind of instrument it was on. It was on a stringed instrument. But we go through her whole story here where she meets uh, Grandma and she becomes a mother. But uh, she literally became a mother. Uh, I didn't know it was a requirement you had to get pregnant first. Maybe it was. But she's pregnant in this little picture here. And... I guess it's a requirement. Maybe you have to know how to care for a child to be a mom. I, I'm not sure. I would assume anyway. But we cut back over to her first day at the plant and she's walking the wall reminiscing. And she asked Ray, because Ray's humming the song. She goes, how do you know that song? And Ray just, he just looks at her and smiles. And he says, hey mom. And that's when I was like, you gotta be fucking shitting me. There's no fucking way. But yeah, everything is starting to slowly come together on why he was, you know, the dog and everything. And she's walking back to the other kids and she looks right at Phil and she goes, don't worry, they escaped safely with her hair down. And she, stood, she just gets with the other kids and they all snuggle up waiting for someone to come to put the fire out. And that's when uh, we see the daybreak. We see, we see the daybreak. The kids have successfully made it out. And I don't think that they could have done this episode any better in any way possible. Uh, I loved every second of it. Norman was very much present. This is the first time I had the feeling maybe Norman is actually dead. I still think he's alive out there somewhere. But I have the urge that maybe his death was kind of like a key part in the story and they're not going to rehash on it. But um, maybe. I don't know. Uh, this episode was amazing. We got the bomb dropped about Ray being Mom's uh, son. We got to see Mom's backstory and how she became a mom. We got to see the escape plan that Norman had plotted. We got to see Dawn and Gilda all playing key roles here. Uh, Emma got her final goodbye to mom in like an epic way all the kids that were supposed to escape got out alive and phil wasn't a bad guy after all he was just being heavily featured because he is a key part of this story so i do want to say again i'm sorry phil i've been against you this whole time but you know you all right uh anyway though guys that's going to be it for me. If you did like this video or you like what I'm trying to do here on this channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace out. Take a moment right here, feeling like it's out gear, driving towards the sun, with a rose and a gun, feel the wind in my hair.